I already made two videos about eyes in Blender, but now they're old AF. Blender has changed so much and so have I. In this video, we're gonna cover everything from modeling to texturing and even creating the Lacrimo Coronco and the tear line. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using my own texture pack that I made. You can download the free version from the link in the description. And that is what we're gonna use for this tutorial. But the full pack contains much more variety of textures and different iris types that you can use for this tutorial. But I've also been working on an eye add-on for Blender. Using this add-on, you can get the most realistic eyes in just a few seconds, and it has every customization you want. From realistic to stylized or anime, to changing the shape of the pupil and adding fake reflections to the eyes, with one click and it's extremely easy to work with with a simple menu like this. First 30 people to click on the link in the description will get the add-on for free. So what are you waiting for? Okay I'm done, let's go. First for more accuracy it's better to start with a reference. Search up eyeball side so we get eyeballs image from the side view. The first one is good so let's get it. Back in blender hold alt and rotate the camera to the side so it sticks to the angle. Shift A and in the image, click on reference and open up the image we just downloaded. Scale and preferably place it in the middle. In the object data properties, maybe turn down the opacity. And in the viewport display settings, turn off grid cause we don't need it. Shift A and add a sphere. In the bottom left, click on it and change the amount of segments and rings. I think this much is good. We don't want it to be high poly cause it's hard to work with. Scale it up and fit it with the image. Then press R to rotate and press 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. Go to edit mode. And in the vertex select mode, select the last vertex and press X and delete vertex. Press 2 to switch to edge select mode. And while you're holding alt, click on the edge to select the outer edges of the eye and scale it until it fits with the image. Now here's where most people start to go the wrong direction by extruding the edges to the front. Most of the YouTube tutorials do it this way, especially this guy. The problem with this method is the tip, where all the vertices come together like this. And when you subdivide it, you get this ugly looking geometry where it's sometimes visible, even on the glass. But there's a better way to approach it. But first, let's make the iris. While the ring edges are selected, press E to extrude, escape to place it back, and scale to the inside. Now press 3 to switch to face select mode. While you hold alt, click on the edges between the faces to select all of the faces in that row. Then press P and selection to separate it from the eyeball. Let's make the hole smaller. So press E to extrude and escape to place it back. Then S to scale it to the inside. Press G and Y to move it on the Y axis. Then select the edges on the inside and press E to extrude the hole. Okay, now let's get back to our eyeball and finish it. The best way to do it is to select that outer ring. Press Ctrl F for the face menu, then click on the grid fill. You can change the span from the bottom, but I think this one is decent enough. Now go to the front view and in the edit mode, press A to select all and rotate until the grid is in the exact middle. Select the four faces in the front and go to the side view. Here press G and Y to move the faces on the Y axis based on the reference. Then select the vertex in the front and move it forward to finish the job. Out of the edit mode, press Ctrl 1 or 2 to subdivide it. To make the bulge more visible, press Ctrl R here and add an edge close to this edge, then push it back a bit. We got the same situation in the back. It's totally unnecessary to grid fill the back too, but if you don't want any triangles on your model, you can take care of the back as well. In the wireframe mode, get the mesh close to the image as possible, so we can move on to the texturing. Now go to the Gumroad link in the description. In there you can type in zero on the price to get the free version. But you can also get the full pack which contains many different eyes. From realistic with all their maps to a stylized and anime style. But we're gonna work with the free version for this tutorial so don't worry. We're gonna use this one as the diffuse map for this Clara. But before using it we need to unwrap our UV. Drag out a new window from the top left and put it on UV editor. As you can see, the UV doesn't look great and we need to fix it. Go to edit mode, in the edge select mode, hold alt and select any edge row in the middle, this one or the one on the left, doesn't matter that much. Press U and mark seam, then press A to select all, then press U and unwrap. In the older blender versions, you just click on unwrap, but in the newer versions, you have these options to choose from. Angle base is the normal, but you can choose minimum stretch too. Hover your mouse on the UV on the right, then press L to select it. This one is the UV from the back half. It doesn't matter that much, so scale it down and place it somewhere.
Now switch to Shader Editor, hold Z on the viewport and go to Material Preview. Add a new material, Shift A and add an image texture. Then open up this clear image in the pack and connect it to the base color. It already should look something like this, but you can go to UV Editor again, tap to go to Edit Mode and align it with the image if you see any issues. You can select these edges and move them manually if you want. The cornea should be see-through, so in order to do that, shift A and add a color ramp. Connect the color ramp to the transmission weight. Then add a separate XYZ so we can give it a direction. Connect the Z to the color ramp so our gradient would be aligned with the axis. If you haven't enabled Node Wrangler yet, go to Edit, Preference, Add-on and Enable Node Wrangler. Then while the separate XYZ is selected, Ctrl T to add the mapping and coordinates. Remove the image textures in between, then connect the mapping to the separate XYZ. Then connect the generator to vector. Make sure only Z connected to the color ramp. Then use the handles to determine the region of the cornea, somewhere around here. The iris position is kinda bad, so let's go to the side view and in the wireframe mode, scale it down so it sits right behind the cornea. Press Shift H to hide everything else. Out of the edit mode, press Ctrl 1 to subdivide. In the shading tab, add a new material and Shift A and add an image texture. Now if you downloaded the full pack, you should have all the folders containing stylized, anime and realistic, but we're gonna use the free version, which is this one. Connect it to the base color. If we go to material preview, we see it looks wrong because it doesn't have any UV. So in the edit mode, press A to select all, then press U and unwrap. It should already be looking good, but go to UV editing and align the UV map correctly. Then right click and shade smooth. Alt H to unhide everything. Go to rendered view and also shade smooth the eyeball too. And if you're using Eevee, this is what you're gonna see. This looks wrong. To fix it before Blender 4.2, it was really straightforward and easy because we had screen space refraction. Now we have ray tracing, which has a bit more steps. When you enabled it, go to material settings and under settings, enable ray trace transmissions, but it is still not fixed. You see this? It, they added this in the new blender that is the cause of this problem so to fix it just add a value node and connect it to the thickness and since the value is zero on default it fixes the problem right away decrease the roughness to fix the blurriness it is still a bit grungy and blurry there's a solution for that too go to render properties increase the samples and under ray tracing put the resolution on one on one and the iris should be crystal clear it's not necessary but we can add hdri map to the scene to see the shader better now that the base eye is done let's make it more realistic you can skip this step because i've already included the normal map and other stuff in the pack but if you drew it yourself or if you want to learn how to easily generate all the other maps using a single diffuse image do this step. Search up normal map generator and enter the first website. Click on the first image on the left and open up the iris diffuse map. It already generates all the maps. Turn off the rotation so we can adjust the settings more. You can rotate the camera by holding click and for panning the camera hold right click. Once you held it in a position where the bump is visible, click on displacement. Use the contrast and blur option to set the intensity of the height map. Just mess around with it until we have a subtle details on the iris. Then go back to normal map and change the strength if you want. You can then click on download button to download the map. The specular is way too bright, so let's bring down the range a bit so we have more contrast. Then download it at the end. Select the iris and since we enabled node wrangler, we can now select the principal shader, press ctrl shift t and select all the maps to import all of them at once. Now in order to actually see the displacement in action, we need to go to material settings and under settings, put the displacement on displacement and bump. So both of them appears on our material. But as soon as you switch, you see this abomination. First decrease the mid level, then the scale, and then the normal map if you think it's too strong. Now when you unhide everything, you should have something like this. I add a normal area light so we can see the difference better. The black outer layer should be a bit thicker, so let's move the handles. You can even increase the subsurface a bit if you want, but it's not that visible. 
Again, you can do the same procedure for this clear image texture, but I included this one in the pack too, so you don't have to do it. Now the difference here is that since the veins are darker, it thinks it should deepen them instead of increasing the bump. We don't want that, so make sure you check the invert button. Back in Blender, simply just select the principle, Ctrl Shift T, and select the normal map. Normal map probably would be too intense, so decrease the strength. The eyeball itself is fully finished. Now we should bring our character for the rest of the procedure. To make the lacrimal coronco, aka tear duct, shift A and add a plane. Bring it up to the eye level. Scale it down and bring it close to the eye. In the edit mode, enable snap tool and in the options, make sure it's on face. Then pick up poly build tool, click and drag the vertices to the tear duct area. Move the mouse on the left side of the face, and when the left edge turns blue, drag out a new face. Then rearrange the vertices. Do the same thing on the right side of the plane and drag out a new face. Continue extruding to the right, using the top and bottom eyelid as a grip for the snap tool. Get out of the edit mode, then press Ctrl 1 or 2 to subdivide. In the edit mode, select the outer edges of the mesh, then extrude to the inside. Then press 3 for the face select mode. Select the faces in the front and scale them down, so we have rounder edges when subdivision is applied. Some vertices got too close to each other, so let's bring them out. While the subdivision is on 1, hover the mouse on the modifier and press Ctrl A to apply that modifier. Now to begin sculpting and modeling, first bring your reference. Now add a multi-res modifier and subdivide one time. Press shift C to pick up the crease brush, then start adding a crease right over here. You can look at the reference image for more accurate results. Pick up inflate brush and add some irregularities all over the thing. We don't want a flat surface. Then use the boundary brush to pin the edges to the inside, so we don't see the outer edges. If you haven't made your eyes inside the same project as the model, it doesn't matter. Go to the file, append, go to your eye file, in the object, import only the eye models, which is the iris and the sclera. Then in the edit mode, try to place it as best as you can in the eye socket. Only reason we're in the edit mode right now is to keep the origin in the middle so we can use mirror modifier later. After that, go back to Kronko and in the edit mode, while the proportional editing is enabled, move the faces forward so it sits right on the sclera. Then use the grab tool to fix any issues you see. Now you can add a mirror modifier on both eyeball and the iris. Then go to rendered mode so we can see the results better. Then reposition the eyes if needed. Now we're gonna texture our crunkle. And in the edit mode, press A to select all, then press U and unwrap it with angled base. In the UV editing, press A to select all and rotate it so the smaller tip is on the left. Now you can add an image texture and start painting the lacrimal coronco. I showed how to paint it by hand in the older video, so I'm not gonna do the same thing again. If you wanna watch that, I put the video on the top right corner. Instead, I included the texture in the file so you can just import it. While the principal shader is selected, press Ctrl Shift T and import all the three maps. Diffuse map is not imported, so let's add an image texture and manually open it and connect it to the base color. If you're in material preview, you should see that the texture is incorrectly placed. To fix it, switch to UV editing mode, go to edit mode and press A to select all. And use the grab tool to adjust the UV with the texture as best as you can. Now we have to make a transition between the Kronko and the eye. To do that, shift A and add a color ramp. Then connect the color of this one to the alpha. We want the direction of the gradient to be from X axis. So let's add a separate XYZ and connect the X to the color ramp. While the separate XYZ is selected, press Ctrl T and add the mapping and coordinates. We don't need the image texture in between, so let's remove it. Now, using these handles, try to get a nice transition between the Kronko and the Sclera. Remember, the black color means no alpha, so it should go from white to black, not the other way around. If you think the size of the iris doesn't match your model, while both Sclera and the iris is selected, go to edit mode and in the wireframe mode, select the iris and the outer part of the cornea, then scale it down. But when you're doing that, remember to edit the color ramp too, because it doesn't change when you scale up or down your sclera. Now let's make one of the most important parts, which is the tear line. Shift A and add a plane. Bring it up to the eye level. 
make it smaller and place it on the bottom eyelid. Enable snap tool and make sure it's on face. And using the same method of retopology, extrude it alongside of the eyelid. Make sure it's almost at the border between the sclera and the eyelid. Then start extruding one more line to the top this time. Now when you want to drag out a new face from a corner, hold click, then when it turns blue, drag it out and keep doing it until you reach the end. Then rearrange the vertices. Out of the edit mode, press Ctrl 1 to subdivide, then in the sculpt mode, try to get it outside of the mesh, but really close to it. To continue, we have to UV unwrap it, so let's go to edit mode and press A to select all, then press U and unwrap like before. To straighten it up our UV map, we can go to edge select mode. Select the top edge, press S to scale, then Y for the Y axis, then press 0 to straighten it. Then do the same thing to the bottom. For the right and left side, press S and X this time to align it with the X axis. Then 0 for the straightening. Press 3 to switch to face select mode. Select the strain at face. Then press A to select all. Right click and follow active path. Rotate and place it in the bottom. Congrats! You have a fully strained UV. Now we have to have a nice transition for this one too. So let's add a color ramp and connect it to the alpha. Ctrl Shift click on the color ramp so we can see it better. Add the separate XYZ again and connect it to the color ramp. Ctrl T again and do the same thing as before. This time you have to connect the Y to the color ramp because the UV is on the Y axis. Move the handles to the left. Black should be on the left so we have a transition to the bottom. Then click on the plus icon to add one more slider and make it black. Then move it just so we have a light gradient between the two black and white in the middle. Now Ctrl Shift click on the principal shader so we can see it. Then under transmission increase the weight to the max. To add that watery effect, add a noise texture and add a displacement node. Connect the noise to the displacement and displacement to displacement. Use the values on the noise texture to change the scale and other things. If it's too stretched, you can Ctrl T on the noise texture and use the scale of the mapping to fix the stretched parts. And this is how it looks at the end. Hope you guys found the video helpful. Make sure to check out the eye creation pack from the link in the description and the amazing add-on. There are also a lot of other things in my Gumroad like full tutorials of creating this hyper realistic skin and also a game ready hair. Check it out if you're interested. See you on the next one. Peace.